Alrighty guys, Gunshy Mori back here with another video. So I know it's been a while, I have taken the last month off of YouTube and just to get some things straightened out, but I am back now and we are doing Arc Editions, the full taming guide. So yeah, if you need to know how to tame the Arc Editions creatures, here you are. And I ain't gonna joke around, we're just gonna hop straight in. <laughs> And here we are with the Concavenator. This will be our first creature here on our look through of Arc Editions. Now, the Concavenator is an interesting creature, as in it is somewhat of a sand shark. You heard me. This man swims through the sand. He is deadly. And he does come in three variants. So this one right here. He is the regular variant. He is going to spawn in deserts and uh, basically on any map that has a desert. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, if it spawns on Lost Islands or Ragnarok. I'm pretty sure it doesn't spawn on Ragnarok. Actually, it does. I am an idiot and I know why because we got this variant. Then we also have the Aberrant variant. This is not the one that spawns on uh, Ragnarok, but yeah, here we are. As you can see, it's not too different from the normal variant, but its eyes are kind. Yeah, his eyes are white. We also got another thing here we'll look at in a second. But the reason why I'm saying it spawns on Ragnarok is because we have an X variant. So the X variant here will spawn on... Uh, Genesis Part 1 and Ragnarok, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know if it spawns in, in the Volcanoes of Lost Islands, but I know it spawns on those two maps. As you can see here, this one came out gorgeous. And again, this one only spawns on Aberration, I'm sure. And this one in Sand. But if we quickly we just change the night, or the day to night. As you can see now, what I was saying... The Aberrant is bioluminescent, and he just has a streak like this running down his side of, or was it bioluminescence? Yeah, bioluminescence. And his eyes actually glow as well. Um, this dude will spawn on the surface of Aberration as well, so do be careful with the Aberrant variant. And yeah, then we got the Volcano variant. It is normal. It's got the magma effect. Like, uh, like all the, what are they, the X variants have that spawn in the volcano. Um, but yeah, now let's get on to how to trap and tame. Alright, now for building the trap, it's pretty simple. So what you're going to want to start with is five wooden fence foundations. You're going to place them like this. Make sure you kind of have it as a too long. Uh, come on. And there we go. And then you're going to want to put up 10 wooden door frames. Doesn't matter which way they're facing. Just make sure that you put them like that and then you double up. You don't want the concavenators here come flying over, you know, and coming and getting you. And now the final step is once you have your trap built. Is figuring out how much C4, C4 you're going to need. Alright? So the way you're going to want to do that is my personal favorite is Super Spyglass. And what you're going to want to do is take 1,500 and divide how much uh, the creature's torpor is by that. So a 130 I saw had exactly, was it 15,000? So I would only need 10 C4 to knock it out because each C4 does 1,500 damage or 1,500 torpor. Not damage, torpor. Yeah. So once you have that, you're going to want to come and place all your C4, right? Aha! And then you're going to want to grab something like, I don't know, a fabricated sniper rifle. Come just stand out here a bit. 
uh, shoot the concavenator, wait for it to get a little close, run it in, just run through the back. Um, hopefully, if you're okay with that, concavenator came through, got stuck there, and then you're going to want to blow this quick, because if it turns around and gets out, you're, it might not be close enough to get all the C4. So once you see it pushed up against this wall, you're going to detonate like so. Alrighty, now that you hopefully have your concave nature knocked out, as you may notice, your trap is no longer there because the C4 will destroy it. So, now that you have him knocked out, you're going to want to keep him knocked out for a little bit before you even put the food in his inventory. Always starve your dinos up before you put the food in, just so that way you get the best effectiveness. So... I would use biotoxin because it's more relevant on most maps. I see a lot of jellyfish around. Or you could use, uh, what is it, narcotics, you know. Plain old narco berries mixed with raw meat shoved in their mouth to keep them out. But yeah. Um. Anyways, but once you do have them starved up enough, I would starve them to about uh, half, I think, is what I was told for concabinators. But once you do that, you're going to want to give them superior kibble. That is the best food you can give them. If you can't make superior kibble, give them mutton. Go find a sheep. That's the second best. That's going to give you the best effectiveness you can get. If not, get prime meat. You're still going to hopefully get a 90% effectiveness up in that area, hopefully, if you don't get any hits. But yeah. Once you have him tamed up, uh, we will then show you how to use it. Alrighty now, guys. Hopefully you were able to tame up your concavenator. And now you're wondering, what can I do with it? Well, if you hit left click, you have a bite attack. And if you hit right click, you will bury yourself in the sand. And if we go out here real quick and we hit C, we will leave a dust trail. And I'm pretty sure if we're running and hit that, we'll leave the dust trail as well along the way as we go. But if I bury myself back down, we can move around in the sand. Oh, yeah, I forgot I was in, uh, was it? Oh, yeah, I was in K mode. Yeah, as you can see here, we can move around the sand as a so. You can sprint in it. And then you can jump. Unfortunately, when you're out of the sand, you can't jump. I'm trying as hard as I can right now. But when you're in, you are. And you actually move faster than you do on land. As you can hear. Let's go make this Thado's day pay. Come here. Oh, and yes, the concavenators are breedable. You just need a male and a female. And they do lay eggs. So, yeah. Enjoy. Alrighty guys, and here for our second creature, we have the X Factonatus. This guy is pretty unique, I'd say. Um, as you can see here, this is the normal X Factonatus. This will spawn in all ocean maps. Um, I do not believe it spawns on Genesis the Genesis maps. Uh, well, it will spawn on all maps with oceans, yeah, except the Genesis maps. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like a bass, but bigger. Um, of course, you can ride it. And it does come in other variants. So we got this one here. Then we got the Abyssal here, which this one will also spawn on all maps. And the difference is, is this one has little tendrils that have glowy things on it. Its body has bioluminescent parts. Its eyes glows. And its teeth, I believe, are longer. Yeah, its teeth are definitely longer. Look at that. And now, lastly, on the variants of the X-Factonatus, we have the X-Variant. In which this one really reminds me of, like, river monsters for some reason. I don't know why. It just feels like... It feels like it's the fish off, like, the, the title for river monsters. I don't know. That's the vibe I get from it. Just, like... Ooh, but yeah, this spawns in the oceans of X, 
Wait, no, but spawns on the oceans of uh, Genesis Part 1. I don't know if any of them spawn on Genesis Part 2, but I know this one spawns on 1. And they do a lot of damage. And now I'm going to show you guys how to trap one and tame it. Okay, guys. So now to tame these guys, you're going to want to find roughly a flat spot. And you're going to want to place down 10 foundations and a 2x5 arrangement like a so. And then you're going to want to place down 20, what is it? It's 20 per side. Oh, wait, no, is it? That's 16, 16. That's 32. Then plus, is it 8 up the back? You need 40. Uh, dwarf frames, I believe. Yeah, you're gonna need 40 uh, stone door frames. Uh, if anything, I will probably have how much you need for this trap on the screen. But, anyways, you will need 40 door frames. Then we're gonna go over to this so that way we can give this a snap point, and then we're gonna place all that there. So what we just did was used a fence foundation, snapped to that foundation, snapped a stone door, was it stone dino gate here? And then a stone door for it. And now we're gonna put these ceiling hatches, 10 of them on top. So that is just so that way at every angle you can shoot at the X Factor Nautis with your crossbow to knock it out. Now, like usual or most ways you would lure things into a trap like this, this is kind of what I would say a smaller version of a wyvern trap. And you're going to want to get the X Factor Nautis kind of just straight in here. So. Alrighty, now that you got your X Factor Nautis, make sure you lead it just straight in. You'll get it right there. Hopefully, it doesn't grab you. And you're going to want to shut the gate on it. Like so. I am in creative. I realized how easy that looks when you're in creative. But if anything, use. Uh, what is it? Go tame like a low level Ichthy, like a 10 or a 5 or whatever. And just level it up a tiny bit but crank nothing but movement speed because these guys are fast and you lead it drop it in there swim out lock the gate and hopefully this dude just sits there and munches on your uh bait ichthy so ichthy uh was it yeah the little uh you give them the little dolphins but yeah so now you, what you're going to do is pull out your crossbow and just start shooting this dude. Alrighty, now that I just got done shooting this dude in the face a bunch. You can see here, they do have low health and high torpor. So, what you're going to want to do, and they also do drain quick. So you're going to want to make sure that you, go, you do get these guys some biotoxin real quick. But now that we have him knocked out, we are going to want to go and start feeding him some raw fish. Oh, wait, no, not raw fish. Raw mutton, prime meat, or superior kibble. I would say let him drain up here a bit, probably about half. That's usually what I go for. Not half. Usually uh, let him drain up one-fourth. That's usually what I go for on creatures before I give them food. But yeah. So you can just give them superior kibble, raw mutton, or prime meat. Alrighty, so now for controls on the x Factinatus, or x Factus, or x Factinatus, you got left click to bite, right click to lunge and grab, and then space will take you up, and C will cause you to descend. 
And unlike most water creatures in this game, X Factus Nautis has the ability to move over land over a short period of time. So you do got to be a bit quick about it. But holding space and and launching yourself forward, you can move across the land. Unfortunately, you cannot jump out the water, but you can jump across the land. And yes, they are breathable. <laughs> Alrighty guys, and for the third creature here on our list, we're up to one of the big boys. We got the Acrocanthrosaurus. And I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button again. Uh, but if here, if we quickly move around here, this one right here in front of me is the regular variant of the Acrocanthrosaurus. Or otherwise known as the Acro. He's the one you're probably here for, if anything. But yeah, this is the normal variant. And now, one of the few things about some of these creatures is that... I don't know why, but some people like adding in scorched variants. But the Acro is one of the ones that has a scorched variant that is really good. And this is it. So this is the variant of the Acro that will only spawn in deserts. So, this one will spawn on Scorched Earth and all the other maps with deserts except the Lost Islands. Um, the other Acro does spawn on the Lost Islands, though. But yeah. Knocked out the same way, but just a different pattern and with some feathers. Now, over here, we got the X variant of the Acro. Now, the X variant spawns in the Bog Biome on Genesis Part 1. As you can see here, we've got some blues and greens here. Um, you know that look a little different probably in the bog biome due to lighting here. Because I'm on Ragnarok right now, so the lighting looks different. Looks like all the other maps, except those little darker ones. Then over here, we got the R variant. we got some greens and purples on this one. I think you know where this one comes from. This comes from Rockwell's Garden. On Genesis Part 2. On the colony ship. So yeah. It's just got some polka dots on it. And it spawns over in the Rockwell side. I believe. I think it spawns kind of up uh, to the edges of the map. Away from the middle. You spawn all around the edges of the... What is it? The bog biome in there. And then you guys spawn in the desert, kind of. Really, most where I've seen them is on mountains and in the dunes in the desert. Mountains and redwoods. That's where I see these guys a lot. But now on how to trap and knock you out. Oh, I fell. Alrighty, now for the acro cage, you're going to want to get, I would say, probably about five metal gateways. I'm going to place them down. Just going to want to line them up, make yourself a pen with them. You do, you do want it kind of big. Or that should be big enough there for the Acro. If I'm correct. Yep. Yeah. And then we'll put the last one right here. Once we have the acro in the cage, do be aware, acros can damage all structures. Um, metal is the one with the most health, so you got the most time to tame like high level ones without going into tech. So now the way this works is by this. It's like a giga trap, or it is a giga trap actually, and we're just gonna use it for an acro. So we're going to wait for this to set up, and once it is, we're going to have to do this fast. We're going to have to piss off the acro, and you're going to need a fabricated sniper rifle and some biotoxin. Oh yeah. Alrighty, I got my acro. Oh wait, what? Did that hit him? I don't have damage numbers right now though, because I... Am I? Ooh, run. Let's 
she still after me? Oh, yeah, he is. Alright, wait a second here. Maybe get one bite. You got one bite in on me. Okay, now that you have done that, quickly run around to his butt. And you've got him trapped in. There we go. And that is how you trap an acro. Now, the way you knock an acro out is actually kind of funny. So you're going to want them to have it come at you like this. I do believe we have to damage it a bit. All right, takes three shots to get it to this stance. Once you have it in this stance, just keep on shooting until he goes into that stance and you go run up and you put biotoxin quickly into his mouth. And you just keep on doing this until he passes out. Also, if you miss out and he goes back into his stance, you're going to have to uh, hit him again three times to get him back into the stance. So after he's done, he'll go back into the stance and you can just keep on shooting until he keeps on uh, doing this. And there we go. He is going to pass out. And that is how you knock out an Acrocanthrosaurus. And now once you do have him knocked out, he takes exceptional kibble, kibble raw mutton, and prime meat. Um, I would probably quickly get some uh, narcotics on him and make sure you do watch him a bit. He does come up out of torbidity pretty, pretty fast for a large creature. Um, but yeah, I let him starve up probably 500 there and then give him some exceptional kibble. I think it'd probably take maybe 16, maybe, or not even that much, probably 10, something like that with my taming rates to tame up a 150 acro. But yeah, that is how you knock out an acro. Alrighty, so now the controls for the acro go as this. Left click is a bite. Right click will put you into the defensive stance. In this stance, you get a 10% health or a 10% resistance to your health loss or whatever. So a damage resistance. And if you hit left click, you will do a shield bash. That which can do up to which can do damage up to metal tier. I was wrong about it being able to do tier or tech tier. Am I? I'm not too sure i'm pretty sure it can but it might only be able to do do metal so let's go with it it can only do metal this says it can only do metal um so yeah and then if i hit c all right i probably have to exit that stance if i hit c i got a side stomp and then with if i hit control we got a roar We heard that another one there at the beginning as well. So yeah. Also, as usual, they are breedable and they do make great battle mounts for uh, PvP, especially if you're raiding a base and you'd knock down something or something to soak up bullets. And here we are, guys, with the Archelons. That's what I'm calling them. Archelon, yeah, Archelon, the little sea turtle. This dude is kind of more like a big old passenger kind of deal. He can hold, I think, five people at a time when you have a saddle. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, we do got the normal variant here. He did get a TLC here. I think a couple, like earlier this year, he did. So he doesn't look as derpy as he did a little, uh, little bit ago couple years ago so as you can see here he's got a nice little shell it really looks like a turtle as well like it blends in i mean kind of get kaiju vibes from it though it has a tail i thought sea turtles didn't have tails 
Okay, anyways, I guess this one does. Uh, but yeah, the Archon is a little bit of a weird thing. Um, yeah, it's just mostly a bus. It is like that, and it does come in the next variant actually that will spawn on the ocean biomes, and it does have a little bit of a different eye and different pattern compared to the other Archon. But yeah. Now, let me show you how to basically tame these guys. Alrighty, so now what you're gonna need to tame this guy is some biotoxin. And he is a passive tame, so you just go up to him and hit E. So if I quickly drop that there. As you can see there, he got 14%. This is a level 30. So it will take a couple seconds here, or, you know, a little bit here for him to get hungry again. So you just gotta play around, play the waiting game, wait for him to be tamed. So he is a passive. Basically, sit around, either feed him superior kibble or uh, biotoxin here. Superior kibble would probably be more efficient than biotoxin. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that that's how the kibbles are supposed to work. But yeah. Alrighty. Now, as I was saying here, as you can see, there are. Four passenger seats here for the Archelon so you got one I'm not gonna hop in all of them but yeah but when you do hop on it you do just kind of lay on his back so you could have four passengers there and when you are land you are slow so he is literally dragging himself across the sand but once you do get in the water he's actually pretty fast and maneuverable so if you and a bunch of buddies are like quickly needing to get down to a base, you know, and you need a, like a bullet tank here for for some reason, I don't know why you would use the turtle, uh, he can tank it up. But once you're in here, you can't really do much. You got a bite, there's nothing for right click. C, you descend, and if you hit space, you go up. There's no uh, roar or anything I'm getting here for him the Archelon, but yeah, they are breedable, so that is another thing, if you do feel like maybe getting yourself a pet turtle, and, custom, and maybe breeding them to get yourself some nice, nice colors, yeah, but that is it for the Archelon. <laughs>
right snipe right here and you're also going to want to spy you're also going to want a spyglass i got super spyglass here and as you can see here i just have a level 10 so it's easy to demonstrate here so you're going to want to get this guy pissed at you make sure he rears up you want him to do his big stomp where he hops up on his back legs Here we go, so get away. Now shoot him in the ankles. You can keep him up there pretty long. Just keep on trying to keep him up as up like that as long as you can. Just keep on shooting him in the base of his feet. And if we quickly swap over here, he's gained some torpor. Now he's losing it pretty fast, so. You do gotta pack it on pretty quick. So we do need him to rear up here. I am in creative, so I can't take damage. But I would suggest probably uh, get a nice tanky creature here. Something you can hit him with every now and again. Uh, I don't know what would be able to tank this. Here you go. <laughs> if he's not rearing up on me now, why? Come on. Is there some is there, is a certain something that triggers it? Yeah, I'm yeah, betting there is. So let's run all the way over here. Mag dump it. Run all the way over here. Mag dump it. Alright, let's see what we got now. Okay, we got quite a bit there. So now we just need you to rear back up. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Make sure your rifle is reloaded. You would stand up, please, so I can knock you out. Lost my aggro. Come on. Maybe being up higher. It just won't go up. Do I have to do like a certain amount of damage maybe? I'm betting. There we go. That is the knockout animation. And if you do accidentally hit his ankles more than you're supposed to, I would recommend, because by now you probably have a Desdemotus if you're on Fenyordor. Um, if not, you're probably a little SOL here. But you will not be able to get 100% taming effectiveness. Um, but if you have the Elixir from the Desdemonis, yeah, you can. Yeah. But now that you have him knocked out, you can give him excellent kibble. That is the most effective. Then crops, so like carrots, potatoes, and corn and that stuff. They will give him the second most, and then it's berries, you know. The worst of the worst. Um, let's go see how much uh, Torpor you're losing here. So I just ran, I ran inside him. You're losing it very, very, very fast. I mean, extremely fast. And, like, you only... Look at how... Yeah, that's a lot of Torpor he lost. <laughs> Alright, yeah, but... Uh, let's show you what you can do with one once you have it tamed up. Now, what you guys can do here for the controls are... Left-click. 
you got the frontal stomp. Also, he turns to wherever you're looking as well. So he'll turn in place wherever you're looking. So again, left click is frontal stomp. Right click is rear kick. So you'll kick things back there. Um, if you hit control, the Bronto will do its fear bellow. And now as you can see there on that parasaur that's running away, it's been scared. And then we also have R, which will swap the gathering effect. Now, I saved the best for last. If I hit C, this is the Giga Stomp stance. Basically, your, your Bronto will rear up on its hind legs and you can start moving. And if I hit left click, you do the Giga Stomp which does a p incredible amount of damage. I just killed a random bird flying through the air. I think that was a Confucius Ornus from another mod. Um, but yeah. Again, Brontos are breedable. Uh, you can get some gorgeous colors on Brontos. Ooh, look! A pack of Dinotherium! Alrighty, you guys have bitched and complained, and yes, I understand, it is a real dino. I said, I don't, I'm not 100% sure it is a real dino, but I think it's based off a real dino. Alright. Good. I didn't know it was called the Krylophosaurus. Yeah, we got two variants here. These are good battle mounts. Uh, we got the normal variant here on the right, and over here on the left, we have the R variant, which will spawn in Rockwell's Garden. And as you can see here, we got some purples, reds, and yellows mixed in there. And on the con, uh, not on the Krylophosaurus that spawns on the maps with snow on them, we got some greens and blacks. So there are de definitely a different color contrast especially yeah because it is rockwell's garden but yeah so there's not much here to show off just yet um as you guys have probably seen in one of my series my previous survival series i've actually used these guys in a kibble farm which was time consuming but yeah we do got kind of Cryolophosaurus is here, and now what you're probably here for is how to tame it. Now, to tame a, a Cryolophosaurus, I highly recommend a trap. Not just any trap. Special trap. One where he can't hit you. So, you're going to start off with placing down some foundations. Like a so. I think uh, a nice 5x3 should work. Uh, maybe a four, yeah. Four by three. We'll put a ceiling there. Alright, now that we have all our floors, we're going to place down some door frames like we did for the other one. Other ones. So this is just so that way we can shoot in. We want to be able to shoot in. That was the wrong key. That's the wrong key as well. There we go. So, I would say, yeah, two's high enough, but maybe, maybe not. So, on the sides that you're not going to have the ramp, I tend to like it a little bit more like, uh, like that. And then I'll put my ramp over here. What did I just build? I don't want to know. Then we got the ramp. We'll just build it down here. Make sure it hits the ground so that way creatures can run up and fall in. But now, we need to get a Krylophosaurus in this pen. And once we do, we got to knock it out. Now, the only way to really knock it out is to make it backfire its cold breath. 
And so I almost forgot something. Uh, make sure you do put a little shoot off here. And then hopefully... Uh, da, 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 I forgot it. You're going to need a pillar as well. I have S plus on, but I'm trying to do this off that. So we'll do a too high pillar. You'll see why here in a second. I also put it way too close. Uh, too high pillar. That should be far enough. Yep. So yeah. Now we got to get a Krylophosaurus in here and make sure you have your rifle and biotoxin. Make sure you have your biotoxin equipped. Where's my biotoxin? Oh no. Okay. I got my Krylophosaurus spotted. So what you're going to want to do is get his aggro. So now that we got it, he's going to be coming our way. So now what you're going to want to do is start running. Get to the top of your trap. I would wait a bit. He might de aggro if you're too far. Oh, if you're too close, though, you will get frozen spit in breath. So let him drop in. Ooh. And you see how he's breathing? You do not want to get hit by that. That will freeze you. So, what we do is we come up with contraptions like this. That you can hide behind. And then shoot him in the mouth. But I can't see his mouth. Okay, so your mouth is right there. Get close enough to Trigger that, and then it backfires. Ooh, can I not give him that? Let me see. Did I do any torpor? I'm pretty sure you can give him biotoxin. No. Huh. Alrighty, so I figured out the problem. So, what it was, is that this dude is not a knockout team, he's a passive. So, I'm going to have to feed him Exceptional Kibble. Or I think, it's, no, it's Superior Kibble. He'll take Superior Kibble. And, if I, can, if I can just get him to breathe where I can see it. Can you see your breath? Come on. Alright, this way. I don't want to shoot you. And I just need you to cooperate. You can't was it Krylophosaurus is never want to cooperate when you're taking them. But this is the best way to do it. He's gonna go for it. No? There we go. You cannot stand there and do that. You can't take it. So it backfires. I not? Oh! Whoops. Okay, now that I have messed up twice on how to tame him, let me show you how to tame him. So, once you are level 80, you can tame a Krylophosaurus. And you're going to need exceptional kibble and a snapper apple. And this is how you do it. Once you have it in the cage here, it is attention. Go in the cage with him if you have to. Just don't get hit. This pillar, leave if we glitch it. He would. There, he's in that stance. Here he comes. With three shots here on the level five, he's there. And then I give him. Oh, that was actually pretty fast. Yeah, you just give him a set of kibble and he tames. So, you're going to have to probably rinse and repeat with that higher level once over and over. Um, let me quickly just do that. Okay, so I said never mind on taming a higher level. So, you guys probably got the gist of it. Um, it probably won't tame if it's a low level. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I think a 150 only requires like, uh, I want to say 
five, six exceptional kibble. So, I don't know if they take special or exceptional. Their wiki says exceptional, so. But their eggs are worth special. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure I gave an exceptional. Not like it works any better, but yeah. But on to the controls. I bet you guys will also figure out how to tame it from my guy, but yeah. On to the controls. If I do left click, I got a bite. Right click. I forgot to do that. Um, if you hit control, you'll go into this stance. And shit, what? Ah. Okay, I found out the problem. So apparently this biome counts as part of the redwoods. But let me stock up on some water here. And the way you do that is either by being in the snow biome or in water. If you hit right click, he will start drinking and filling up the pouch on his neck. But once you do have it, uh, this bite here will do a simple little bit of a freezing kind of deal on your target. Then right click again is just that. But see, you'll do your spit. This is the simple little spit that's just short range. And then if I quickly stock up here again. And we go into control. We got this turret mode. Which is our frost cannon. Which will freeze people in place. And I do believe this also works kind of like the snow owl. Where if you freeze them, you, you can uh, start healing them. But yeah, as usual, the Krylophosaurus is breedable. And I would recommend it, especially with the R variant. Look at look at the pattern and the colors on it. I just wonder what uh, amazing combos people can get. Alrighty. As you guys can see here, this one is the one that scares me the most. I do not like trying to tame it, but it is a fun tame, I'm not going to lie. It's just scary, because you might get chomped. But we got the Dinosuchus. And as you can see here, we got this nice normal variant here, which spawned us some nice greens. I like the light green. One thing I love about the Dinosuchus is they got some tail physics, so it will droop down and hang off. But yeah, they are legit really big i'd say they're probably about the size of what you can max make a player that is their height and then when they stand up i think they that kind of doubles so they're really tall all right then over here this is the aberrant gator or dinosuchus as you can see it's much darker colors on it i'm pretty sure it has some underglow or that might just be the sun I don't know. We'll come back and turn off the lights and see what it's got. I think it's this strip right here along its side. You can kind of see it. But, lastly, we have the X variant that will spawn in the bog biome. So, yeah. This one has, like, some zebra stripes on it. Just cut across all the way. Again, this one spawns in the bog on Genesis. This one spawns on Aberrations, I think, in the do or well i guess where the water is and then this one spawns in all the swamps so yeah now that we got that let's go look at them in the night all righty looks like the only one that gl glows is the aberration one and as yeah it's got a stripe down its back and down its tail its tail kind of looks like an anaconda yeah doesn't look like the x variant glows at all so let's get on on how to tame them Okay, guys, so what you're going to want to need to tame a Dinosuchus is some superior kibble or raw mutton or prime meat. Those are the things that you can give them. You also have to be a certain level, again, just like the last critter where you have to be level 80 to tame the Krylophosaurus. I believe you have to be level 80 to tame, or at least, no, you have to be level 70 to tame the Dino, Dinosuchus. So when he opens his mouth like this, you're going to want to run up. Throw food in and run away. I think we lost his aggro. Yeah, he didn't aggro on us. So now we can wait. Let's see what that one piece did. That one piece to a level 35 on four times taming got him up to 72%. 
So this bad boy should only take me two pieces. I would think on a, a 150, I would say six or seven. This is our Dinosuchus. And as I said, they are tall. Look at that. That's two players. His tail is probably as thick as one person. So, yeah. Let's get into what they can do. Alrighty. Now, for controls on the Dinosuchus, with the left click, you got the simple bite. It's pretty fun. And if you hit right click, and... You hold it, you got the gigabyte. And that will do a lot. Then you got this. Then if you hold C, it will swipe like that. And now if I hit left control, we got a cosmetic roar. Really doesn't do anything. But if you hold space while you're looking around. Oh yeah, I'm in K mode. If you hold space while you're looking around, you'll move. And if you stop holding space, see, he can't. But if you hold space, you can rotate him. So he's a good dude to hold up one spot. You know, hold your ground. Defend from all angles. But yeah. Anyways, they are breedable. Um, I would not recommend it, though. They are quite big. So. But go for it if you want some boss killing alligators or... Dinosuchus. I think they're an alligator. Or crocodile. Yeah, they're probably a crocodile. But anyways. Alrighty, guys. And here we are. Oh, shit. Went in the way. With the Helicoptrion. Now, these guys are amazing creatures. So, we got the normal variant here. So, this one will spawn on all maps with oceans. Then, over here, this one is the X variant. This one will spawn on the Genesis Part 1 ocean. He does look amazing. Really do like the pattern on this one. I have seen some blues as well. But this one, this one spawns, I think, it's either in the underwater ocean on Genesis Part 2, or I think I've seen it in some big bodies of water on the Rockwell side. I can't remember. But I know it spawns on Genesis Part 2. So, yeah, this is the Radical variant ex with Extreme and the Normal. So, yeah. These guys are amazing for getting blueprints, really, and harvesting pearls. So, let me show you how to tame this passive tame creature. Alrighty, so now, to tame a Helicoptron, you're going to want to be level 91... And you're going to want to have some little ratfish treats, which are made from ammonite bile, giant bee honey, and Tuso tentacles. So they're a little end game, but this creature is very end game. So when you do have the ratfish tentacles, you just need to get close to him. And when he takes it, you need to be very careful. Because once he takes it, boom, that right there will trigger all the animals that are around you to come and attack like that Megalodon. Because this is Ammonite Bile. So now, all these animals are attacking me. Oh no! Oh! Alrighty, so I decided to skip the part where we finished the taming, but basically it's rinse and repeat giving him the Amnot Bile concoction of tentacles and all that. Um, on the 150 here, it only took... Oh, wrong thing. On this 150, which is now a 225, it only took five Amnot Bile to get it to tame. But every time you give it one, it explodes into that mess, which you will get covered in, and all the animals around will come and try to attack you. So, yeah. But for now, what we have for controls are left click does a bite, right click does a tail swipe, C does nothing, space does nothing. I know it does something, something does something if I'm up here. 
So if you're near the surface, space does nothing. C? Oh, C will do a leap out of the water when you're near the surface. Which is awesome. Now, the best part about the helicopter on is probably this. Select an item to be broke, breaking down. Alrighty, now that we have these, which are helicopter and saddles, if you put these in its inventory, and then say click on it, convert to blueprint time convert. And what this will do is that this will start to break down the item into a blueprint, which hopefully, which I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, that the conversion success right here is at 51. So right now it's a 50-50 chance that this ascendant one would be complete. But if I quickly say, do this helicopter on side right here, it is also a 50-50. And I hit convert. First off, you're gonna get thrown off and then your helicopter is gonna start making the sawing sound. Alrighty, and now it is done. As now you can see, we have a helicopter and saddle blueprint. So, these guys are very good endgame creatures. Because if you can get one, I'm pretty sure you can breed and mutate their conversion success rate as well. So that way you can get it up there. Because I think, what does this give me? Yeah, that's 0.5 at a time. So if, I, if you can mutate their conversion success rate, that would be awesome. But anyways... They are breedable. They do have their own custom egg. Now, as you can see here, the Helicoptrion egg is different than all other water creature eggs that's not the round ball. It actually looks like a shark embryo sack, which sharks actually do drop for their pups to get out of. Alrighty. And of course, the last creature on our list here is the Dinotherium. Of course, it's also the most recent creature. But for the Dinotherium, you're going to want to be level 95 before you even think about taming this guy. We got the regular variant here, which he is massive. I would say he is bigger than uh, a mammoth. He's de he's like twice the size of a mammoth, and then he is about the size of I want to say a Bronto, really. It's the only thing I can compare him to in size is a Bronto. Um, he is very awesome. This one right here is the regular variant, and then this one right here is the Rockwell variant, or the e or R variant. He will spawn over in Rockwell's garden. And as you can see, he has a nice polka dotted pattern with some stripes across the back. Yeah. Now, these guys are a very interesting passive game in which they will beat the shit out of you if you get it wrong. So, I will show you what not to do. That's, that's one of the signals that it's a no-no. See when his like, trunk's up there around that's one of the ones that's like, yeah, no, it's a bluff. It's a bluff. He's going to attack you. See how the ears are back right now? That's a red light. See, ears are flapping. Taking that. I'm sniffing. Think he wants I think that one is an actual like yeah approach me I'll get give me beer. Nope. Yep, 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 yep. This is a really green light, so approach. There we go, there we go. So when his trunk's wagging like side to side, that's a green light. When his ears are forward and flapping, that's a green light. And when they're doing both together, that's a really green light. That means he wants it. Alrighty, guys. So now that you have tamed your Dino Therium, you are probably wondering the controls for it. So, if you hit left click, you got a front stomp. If you hit right click, you got a trunk smack with the cooldown. 
if you hit spacebar it does nothing if you hit c you have a roar which does different effects depending on what class you are on so on female dinotherium when you do the roar it will give them and your allies a defensive buff on a male it will give them an attack buff so yeah and if for control we got a cosmetic roar that does nothing so for c that is the defensive buff for control that is the um cosmetic roar another thing we can do with the dinotherium is they can move side to side and at angles backwards they can move in a 180 or 360 range of motion for any creature which would make them the perfect battle mouse for sieging a base so they're kind of a siege creature definitely they are breedable um, I've already seen Syntac, I believe, breed some of these guys into, like, monsters that will kill everything in their sight. So, yeah. Just know your limits. But anyways. Alrighty, guys. I hope this video has helped you. And if you guys did like it, please do leave a, leave a like and subscribe. Uh... Leave a comment as well if you feel like it. But anyways, this has been Genshai Mori signing off. Please do come back for more art content. In peace.